Are we online? We're doing good? This We're is recording? This is out. We're recording, oh my God. Are we okay. gonna keep this in the outtakes? What do they call it? All the bloopers and everything? You know, like the Jackie, Sometimes we do Jackie Chan movies or Hell Sometimes of the we Sticks do it. Sometimes we go. Sometimes we don't. We should All do right. an outtakes video. Sorry, I'm yapping. So we're gonna get started with this one. Um, we're just gonna quickly go through what these two things are. If you don't know what this is, then where have you been all this time? So this is actually the AM5 from ZWO. It's actually one of their strain wave mounts. And we have its little brother over here, which is the AM3. AM3. Which is also a strain wave mount, believe it or not. And I think the first I thing... can't stop fiddling with this, I apologize. It's okay. <laughs> all I these think... little widgets and gadgets on here. Well, I mean, we can go through all, all these things too in oh, just cool. a second. That's cool, I like the, sorry man, I'm jumping the gun here. I, just, I, know, I like the movement, a... it feels good. It does, look, it does. See, that's the thing about this stuff is, this is one of the things that uh, I should point out with mounts of old by mounts of today is yeah. tolerances have increased. Oh, everything has gotten so much better, the machining, everything. They have. And producing yeah, something mean. like this has yeah. been, you know, it, it's like, why couldn't have they done this sooner? Yeah, they've made great strides in technology for, you know, over the, the recent years. Yeah, it's definitely true. I'm just surprised how smooth it is. It is. It is good. And, you know, the way this altitude moves is really smooth. You know? Oh, yeah, totally. So, and the idea of not having to use a counterweight if you don't. Well, I mean, so here's the interesting thing. The payloads on these things is around about 18, 17 pounds on this guy, 28 yeah. pounds-ish, give or take. Right. Obviously, if you add the counterweight to it, we can actually increase the actual payload performance. Right. Generally speaking, I would always tell people you should always have the counterweight on here anyway if you can help it. I like it too. It's the tipping hazard. I, exactly. That was always my pet peeve. Right. That was our biggest concern. So there's a couple of accessories that you can add to this actual unit, um, such as the pier extension, which we do have one, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Uh, all it does is just lifts the height of the actual head up. Right, so exactly. If you're using long refractors, yeah. you're less likely to have a collision. So, can you explain a little bit more about the tipping effect so people understand a little better? Yes. Because I don't think that'll it, yeah, it's, it's, resonate um, with everybody. What happens here is it's a center of gravity. Yeah. When you have everything loaded up really, really high, your center of gravity is higher up. Yes. Meaning that your moment arm, if you were to push it or you've got too much weight on one side, it's more mm. likely to fall over. Right. And it doesn't take a lot to make this thing topple over and, you know, end over end. Right. In fact, classic things that I could show you is um, if you had a guy with a camera and a tripod stand and the wind blows, you right. would blow the tripod and stand and everything away with it. However, yeah. if they actually brought the center of gravity closer to the bottom, it's yeah. actually less likely to fly away, believe it or not. Right. That's why in some of those pro tripod, well, you do photography, so you know this, right. but they put those weights down the center. Yes. Yes. You All know. the time. I suppose, uh, in theory, somebody could get a tripod to do a similar thing. Funny thing you should say that. So yeah. when you buy any of the uh, AM5s or the AM3s with the tripod, yeah. you actually get the carbon fiber tripod yes. with a bag. And what I do is the bag attaches to the corners of each of the legs yeah. and you can put the weight in there. Yeah. So if you have a portable battery system, you know, like one of these um, you know, lithium ion units, you can just put that in there and the weight of that alone is enough to bring your center of gravity back down. Right. So thus alleviating the tipping issues. And now, some of those fancy tripods are, can be pretty pricey, by the way. But I, I know those prices are always subject to change, oh, yeah. so you'll put that in later. But I, I am kind of surprised how little the price is on the tripods for these. Well, tripods, Jeez. you know, at the end of the day, there's nothing innovative about a tripod. They don't really change in price. I mean, yeah. uh, ZWO has opted for doing the carbon fiber version of this particular leg. It's only a yeah. two-sectional, unfortunately, which right. some people think it's a downer, but in reality, you kind of don't want to have these legs getting smaller and smaller. As or too light, up. right? Yeah, although anyway. there's just no weight and there's just right. no stability in them. Yeah, I see what you mean by top heavy. So the, uh, they have a rod, I guess, that you can put in here. Yes, so. yes. There's another thing I want to mention that I think is kind of cool. They tell you which way to position your lens. And there are sometimes situations where you have a scope and you're like, should I put it on this side or that side? But they tell you, they got yes. the little logo there. Yes, there is an actual logo in the dovetail saddle itself, um, yeah. which indicates which way the scope is supposed to face. Because, you know, like you've said before, I've done it before. Yes. And especially with mounts with like homing things. Yeah, I know. You're That's not paying important. attention. Yeah. You know, it's, it's... I concur with that. I think actually, to be honest, all mounts by today's standard that uses any type of homing actually has an indexing marker to tell you right. which way is facing what direction. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a given that they're just that. doing that now. It is interesting though, they are using both V and D standard in the industry for both of these mounts. I would have figured just V style for this one. 
Um, but, you, you know what the funny you know? thing here is, is like, I would have said the same thing. It'd have been very strange, but it was yeah. kind of like the the original Celestron VX mount. Yeah. Which oh, I remember that. Had LV, yeah. And a lot of people would have to adapt it in order to accept right. D style because, you know, for whatever reason, they think it's more stable or they have more accessories or something's going on that they're doing that's unique. Yeah. I mean, the general theory is that, you know, typically bigger scopes or heavier duty scopes have the big D plates. And right. therefore, in theory, people would use heavier mounts. But these things hold an astonishing amount of weight oh, yeah of course for for being so small i mean the know? thing here that people disliked about the original vixen style dovetail especially when you were using like say a newtonian yes is when they would mount in yeah. they would rock backwards and forwards inside of the dovetail yeah and that was always a known problem but we're talking big newtonians here yeah this right. is not the case on refractors yeah i know so a lot of these smaller telescopes tend yeah. to have vixen dovetails but it's nice to see both V and It is. It's better to have it not needed than to need it and not have it, right? The old exactly. Thing. Yeah, so I do like that. Um, yeah, and these are individual, so in theory it should be tight. Um, you got your on-off switch here, I see, and we got, the, we got our uh, ports on here. Yep. So we got the USB, we got the auto guide, hand control, do do do. And uh, we got 12 volt. Yes. DC. And that is 5 amp. Now, so. the one major difference about this mount is, is, uh, is the lack of 12 volt out. That's a major difference between the AM3 and the AM5. So you have to mm -hmm. think ahead of time yeah. when powering certain things. Now, don't underestimate what the AM5 and the AM3 can do in terms of power. Yeah. It has got its limitations. In this particular case, its maximum current output is 3 amps. Right. It's so what they that. did is they did not want to have users passing power through these things because you're not necessarily going to use a stronger power supply. You may only have a 5 amp anyway. Right. So they would prefer it that you didn't run through the mount. Plus... More complications for internal cabling and things like that. They just thought, let's just keep it simple and keep the cost low. Right. That's fantastic. I, so far, I, I mean, I like it. It's small, it's super smooth, and it's very quiet. For those of you who've never heard one of these things, they're very quiet. Yes. They're, they're, they're whisper, very, yeah, very quiet. They're very whisper quiet. I was very impressed at that. You know, one of the things that um, I think is a good thing is, this is the AIM-5. It's, it's not heavy, heavy, but yeah, it's, it, it doesn't it feel... feel something but when you pick up the am3 by comparison yeah you know there is an obvious weight difference yeah so and, and the, the rule of thumb i say is keep it as small and portable right exactly just what you need to carry whatever it is you have right you know now if i had to make a choice on which one would i buy yeah and you know i'm not even go by circumstances it's probably chance of using it yeah i'm probably still more likely to go with the am5 over the am3 Better to have it not need it, need it not have it? To a certain extent. Is that your theory? That's my theory. Better to have it not need it, need it not I like have. the payload capacity. However, yeah. for those people who do like to travel and have small setups, the AM3 by comparison is probably the best one regardless, if depending mm -hmm. on what it is that you're doing. Yeah, and people should know that uh, most of the astrographs people are using now are very portable now because, you know, the sensitivity of the cameras, the technology and everything mm -hmm. getting improving. Um, you can get away with small scopes now. Yeah. It's amazing. You know? I mean, as a just a regular camera tracker using, say, like a 135 millimeter um, lens for a, a camera, like a, a Canon DSLR or a Nikon or a mirrorless or whatever it is that you guys want to use, yeah. the AM3 would be the much, much better solution if you're doing that type of thing. Yes. You know, small grab and go, even though the AM5 by comparison isn't that much bigger, but you know, mm -hmm. the target audience for this is the small grab and go market. Right. And again, yeah. both options can be powered using the ASI Air. Uh, it doesn't matter which version you have, the Plus Mini or whoever. Yeah. Um, of course, it comes with the ASCOM driver, so you can control it if you choose to use it on a laptop and yeah. so forth. You know, for travel-wise, though, I like the concept that you can use this without counterweights. Can't really do that on my EM200 mount. No, you, you know, can't. I got to carry around three for my scopes. I got to carry around three 11-pound counterweights. That is cumbersome. It's definitely not travel. Oh, yeah, definitely not travel. Not travel friendly. friendly. But um, even this is. But even having said that, you still have to pay attention. When you use larger optical tubes, you still have to think about counterweights. This is not one of those things where you could just simply, you know, forget about it. I agree with that 100%. And it goes back to what you were saying about using the counterweights. Yes. You know, for that. And so, you don't want the top heavy uh, situation. Exactly. So if you know. you're doing a peer mount, for example, then yes, I would say you can get away without using any counterweights because you should be able, to, this should have so much torque yeah. to overcome the weight regardless. Right. We hope we're covering this fairly well because we want to ask the questions that people would want to ask, you know? 
Right. And uh, that's pretty good. Other than that, it's a pretty straightforward looking system. Yeah. Obviously, it relies on the proprietary uh, SIR Pro and... Not 100% systems. remember, you can use your own laptop. You can use your own computer. Yeah, People may want to know about that. It does have its own ASCOM drivers. You can power it. In fact, it actually comes with a little tiny hand controller. It's not a go-to system, Yeah. but it does it's have like my a hand tongue. controller. It's just a hand controller. Yeah. Uh, and that, honestly, that's, in my opinion, that's the way you want it. You want the brains to be a separate thing. Yes, you know? as simple as possible. Yeah, because you, you, we've had many situations, you would know about this, fault in a hand controller, you're all shut down, man. You're exactly. done. Coast, you don't have anything working if you, your hand controller fails. You put all that information in right. there. So I do like that aspect about it. It's sort of a la carte in a way. I guess when you add the pieces, when I think about it, you know? Okay, so I'm gonna bring something in right now, which is basically the peer extension. Yes. And a carbon fiber tripod, so you guys can have a look at it. Let's so take a look. All right, guys, here we go. I'm gonna put this bad boy together. Let's go here. We're gonna tighten this screw and get this nice and solid. This little tripod. Daniel, let's uh, talk me through the uh, the peer extension. So we got quick. the PE160. Yep. We take this guy here and we flip it over. And, and we, obviously we put the bolts on to attach it on. Yeah, straight in there and nestle it. Yep. Now I like these, uh, these kind of, you know, you'll see these fasteners here. They're kind of cool because when you get to a certain point where you can't run them, you can pull them out. Yes. Position them anywhere you want and just snug that in there. You notice that, uh, um, let me snug it in there. It's a nice pair extension. It is. I like it, it's solid as heck. Yeah. Um, and then we have the space in here to adjust here. Yep. I really like it. Um, on the bottom here, we have the same, the same connection that goes onto their tripod. Yeah, proprietary tripod, by the way, or adjustment here. This doesn't look like, sorry. We're gonna That's three eights. Was it three eight? That's really three eight. But it's still proprietary because you got you see how they're. Oh yeah, no. So this part of it is a proprietary section. There are other companies yeah. that sell a similar tripod to this particular design. Yeah. Uh, and they are all interchangeable, but they've opted for this particular system because of yeah. the three point pinch contact system. And it's exactly the same. Yes, it's exactly the same. So if you have one multiples on the of these parts, you can just basically put them onto the different pieces. Yeah. Incidentally they have other peer extensions to change all the heights so they can go up to the PE200, which is actually the more popular one, but that's like a yeah. steel solid pipe um, version. Right. Um, and again, it has the same connectors, so you can actually stack these stack on top. On it's beautiful. I, li I, just, I like the idea that this thing is just so... It's so nice and for the amount of, I gotta be honest, for the amount of weight that it holds, it's pretty impressive. Yes, definitely. You know? And uh, yeah, it's really solid though. It's snug tight, man. Could you see yourself using one of these? <laughs> um, no, I, I, honestly, I could. It's just, it's hard to get me to not use what I have. Right, I understand, <laughs> understand. I've had my mount for 20 years, man. You know, I never fix what ain't broke. But you know what, That's a, it's a really interesting yeah. reservation. It's a resistance to the new technology. Um, if yeah. I was to tell you, it, th this, in, compa in comparison to your other mounts, yeah. saves a lot of back-breaking setup. That yes, was I would believe the critical that. thing. It's true. And I think that's what everybody was afraid of when they initially saw these mounts, yeah. and they just see new technology, more headaches, or they're so used to their old setup. Right, right. And I think yeah. the market in general for the last two, three, four plus years, especially during COVID, the biggest thing that I used to get from people is, there's got to be something more portable. There's right. got to be something lighter weight. Right. Well, the answer really is, there is, and this is the this answer is it. to it, all of it. I can see myself trying it. Could you I, get into I it? Know you can... I know that's hard to believe, but... <laughs> Are you going to put these in the outtakes now? <laughs> Maybe. No, um, well, you know, I'm kind of, I'm old school. Yes. And Simon knows this. But um, I will say, I am impressed with it, um, being that this is new school technology. And this is the thing that everybody knew into the hobby it was going to grow into. And so this is what they'll know. Now, are you, if you were presented with the two, which one would you gravitate towards? You know, um, I probably would go after this guy. Do you want to know why? Go for it. Because 
I see myself putting something like a small four inch refractor on this. And I think this would be plenty sufficient. Oh, more than enough. Yeah, and for that reason, I think it would be the ultimate little, uh, you know, grab and go. So I'd probably be, be more inclined to go with this. You're gonna take this home tonight, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. We're gonna get out of here. Daniel's probably gonna beat me up in the parking lot and try to take <laughs> this from me. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with us at telescopes.net. Visit us at telescopes.net or call us toll free at 888-427-8766 and ask for Simon Tang. The stupid astronomer. You're not here anymore, are you? I'm on temporary leave. Yes, he'll be back. And so will we. Thank you.